Hey, welcome back everybody. It's Kevin from Hats and Guitars. Good to see everybody. It's really, really good to see you actually. Frank is here, uh, Mini Me is here. And um, we're gonna start steaming. I wanna start steaming a lot now, guys. Um, we're gonna start doing some live steamings very soon too. Um, almost everything is here. I have a few more things that are coming for my studio. I have some furniture, I have some racks coming, you know, shelves and things and uh, a few more materials, but uh, I am set up to Steam, so you can always uh, get me uh, by e email. It's kevintoddgerber at gmail.com. Uh, I believe I also list my other email at the end of every video. It's quadrogong at gmail. But yeah, just remember my name, Kevin Todd Gerber at gmail, and you'll always be able to uh, send me a message. Uh, I have a lot of vintage hats that I'm going to be selling. I have some very, very nice things. Uh, a lot are still on the way. And um, some of them are here. And uh, we're getting a few things uh, before I really start this business up, start pricing them and everything. I'm going to uh, take some very interesting pieces, uh, vintage pieces, and um, we're going to fix them up. We're going to restore them. Uh, if they're not already, like, brand new, I'm going to make them look new. So we're not going to sell stuff, you know, that's old looking, stained, beat up and stuff. Um, I did get one tornado, a Stetson tornado that has a, uh, a little pen writing on the inside. Somebody wrote their name. But I really wanted to get that hat because it's got like a, their version of the Kavanaugh edge on it. Um, what is it called? The, the, the Stetson called it a crafted edge. So it's got a cav edge on it, that little uh, stingy brim that I, I steamed for a little bit the other day. This tornado. Yeah, it's got a cab edge on it. I believe they called this a crafted edge. Yes, they do. Crafted edge. So, yeah, I picked that up. It wasn't in brand new condition, but it was very clean. Zero uh, moth bites. There's no stains or anything that makes it look old. Like, I just, I figure if I'm going to be selling, you know, hundreds and hundreds of vintage hats over the years, I don't want to bring any moths or anything into this house, so that would be a disaster because I'm also planning on bringing in new hats. We're going to be uh, starting the KTG line, Kevin Todd Gerber line. Uh, I heard it's very trendy now to use your name as a as a designer name, you know, so you just use your name. So, hey, I'm going to do that. You know me, Mr. Trendo. So, we're going to have some new hats coming in. We have manufacturers making hats for me. We're going to be doing a private label. Uh, we're going to start off, hopefully, you know, maybe working with, uh, with doing some hats with McGill first uh, because I'm very, very happy with their felt quality and their, um, they're just a fantastic company. The people are really nice there, just very sweet, very humble, easy to talk to, and they're very accommodating. They'll do whatever you guys want. Um, if I want to order a hat with a uh, different uh, brim size or the binding, a different color, anything I want, I can do it. Uh, we can have my name printed on the sweatband. We can have a, a, a private label, uh, what do you call it, uh, lining done, all that stuff. So we're going to start off slow with one model. Okay, we're going to do one model. We're going to try to make this hat first. We're going to take some pre-orders for it, sell them. And as they're selling out, we're going to work on ordering the second one. So, you know, we don't have to wait like another, you know, three, four months for them to come in and stuff. We're going to get a second custom hat and, you know, a third and a fourth and a fifth. And uh, the idea is we're going to try to have you guys design the hats yourselves. That's going to be the, the, the premise, the base of this company. Yes, I'm going to design some hats, some dream hats that I've always wanted to be on. Like, I want this hat. I want this hat in purple. I've always wanted one in purple. Um, I wanted one in a really nice teal turquoise, uh, like a light blue, sort of a, a royal blue, but lighter. Maybe, I don't know what you would call that, like a Carolina blue or something. Um, so, you know, those are my dream hats that I want to make. And I figured if, if I'm liking something, there's got to be somebody out there that likes these vibrant colors too. But we're not going to keep doing that. Um, we may, we'll do a vintage teardrop for the second hat. Maybe something like a whip it. Uh, we could do a whip it kind of a thing with a, uh, with a really thick silk finish. Maybe like a steely blue gray. Silk finish beaver. Ooh, that would be nice. Like uh, we could do a teardrop or a nice center crease. We could do a three inch. We could do a Hamburg at a silk beaver. We could do pork pies. Um, 
They have wonderful, wonderful derbies, all sorts of things we can design. So that's the way this is gonna work. I'm gonna design a few hats. You guys are gonna design hats. We're gonna just collectively say, hey, what do we want? Do we wanna do a center crease? Do we want to do a silk finish? Do we wanna do a, a regular felt? Uh, how about like a trendy flat brim, you know, like a big flat brim or something like an open crown kind of thing, like a big open crown, big baller thing with like a, a, a pencil curl, you know, kind of like a, an old boss of the plains kind of open crown Native American thing. Things that are not available, we can make those hats, have them custom made and buy them ourselves. We could make up those things where people say, oh my gosh, where did you get that? I want that. Well, that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna make our dream hats come true. And um, I also wanna do a lot, lot more steaming now that I have time to show you guys what steaming is all about. It's not like I'm rushing and you know flipping on the camera between customers. Actually, when I was at JJ's, I was not allowed to make those films. The only way I could actually do it was when I'm doing a sale or steaming somebody's hat, just put my camera up, flick it up real fast, and that's it. Uh, edit it later. You know, I would take the sound off and I'd add, uh, what do you call it, narration and stuff. But now, I have unlimited time to show you guys exactly what this art of steaming is all about. Um, for me, the most important thing is that I have something like this to work on. Now, you know, these things can be very expensive, these uh, brass hat stretchers and stuff. There's a company called Garve that makes them, G-A-R-V-E. You can find them used and stuff. Um, but uh, you don't need something like this. Anything that's this shape, if you can get a hat block this shape, okay, the hat block with the band block and the stand and everything so it's high enough for you to take a hat and put it on top without this part hitting the table, you know, you can't just have a, an open crown hat block. That's not going to be high enough, okay? It's got to be higher off the table. So if you, you get the whole set, an open crown, a nice hat block that's small enough that you could fit it inside of all your size hats, seven and a quarter or seven and a half. Get that and have it high enough. You need the, the two ports that go underneath it, the band block, the stand and everything. And um, you can use other things. You can improvise. Um, I really like having something like this to work on. Without this, I, I'm just kind of lost. So let's, um, let's talk a little bit about this. Now, what about stiffening? Uh, stiffening spray. You can use the Manhattan stiffener is probably the best. Um, you buy that from Raymond at Manhattan.com. He does sell individual cans of it. I emailed him and asked. He said a lot of people were asking. It's not on his website, but they're still in the process of getting all their items on their website. So you just call up Manhattan, talk to Raymond on the phone, say, here, how are you doing, Raymond? Kevin, uh, Kevin from JJ's, Kevin from YouTube told me that you're the man that has a, a can of si a sizing. Uh, they only have one can of sizing, that's called Manhattan sizing. It's gonna work for your uh, for stiffening straws and for stiffening your felts. Uh, the little white can, buy it from him, he's the man. Uh, Manhattan.com or just give them a call. I'm sure he can send one out to you. Uh, the other thing is there, there are other people who sell it. There's a place called Manhattan Wardrobe Supply that sells it, but um, they get it from Manhattan. So just get it straight from the source. It's going to be the cheapest. And he's a really, really nice man. Um, he's, he's an older fellow, really cool West Indian accent, just really charming and friendly. And, uh, you know, they have a very little spot up on a you know, higher floor and stuff. And... Um, they used to be part of another company, a huge company that sort of separated. So now he's kind of, you know, in his smaller location. And, you know, I'm trying to help him out because uh, they're just, you know, really nice older folks and they have the best, you know, tools of the trade in Manhattan. So you guys should just know about that. Manhattan is awesome. Not only that, they also sell hat boxes. They have round boxes, four different sizes. Uh, round boxes, come on. Uh, I'm probably gonna get a bunch of those so that I can sell my hats in those too. It'll be an upcharge, obviously, but uh, um, they have hat cases, you know, like the luggage cases that you could take six hats, 10 hats, whatever, they have them from this big to that big to that big, with handles on them that you could throw in the trunk of your car, you could throw them in the TSA, uh, you know, check them in the airport and stuff. Really strong hat cases 
the ones that the sales rep use, you know, places like Sets and Borsalino McGill, when they bring hat samples to a hat shop, they have these cases. They look like big drum cases. He sells those too. So yeah, another plug from Manhattan. Um, McGill Hats, again, uh, their, their website is incredible. I think it's a really good, good source to get their stuff. Uh, a lot of people have been saying that they want to see something like a Sinclair, um, uh, the Ontario, the Ontario, but in, not in a two and three quarters inch brim, a little bit shorter, like something like I'm wearing, maybe a two and three eighths inch brim. They do make hats like that. Um, I'm going to find out from Jared exactly what that one is called. But uh, they, they make a lot of things. And um, one of the only companies that's making a true stingy out of good fur felt. Got a nice fur felt stingy with a one and five eighths inch brim that looks really old school. And I'm very excited about uh, discovering their website. And I think it's a good, good source for people. It's a new trend that's been happening lately in the last few years. Uh, I think David Morgan was the first one to start it. Uh, they started selling the Cougars directly from their distributor, their U.S. distributor, David Morgan. Um, so you can go right to them and order a Cougars instead of ordering it from some store who is making a little profit, you know. Uh, you order it right from... So they started it, then Stetson started selling from their website. Now uh, Celentino is, has been doing it, and a lot of people have been discovering that, you know, hats like the Queen and the Sterling um, hats that we sold at JJ's are actually a bit cheaper there and that they have a lot, lot, lot more colors. I mean, so many more colors. You could get, you know, the, the Hamilton, you remember that one, uh, the Queen, and you can have it in, um, in a silk finish or velour or really wild colors like white or eggshell or navy or burgundy and orange. They're just a great company. Then we get to McGill Hats. McGill is a company that makes all sorts of things. They're making very trendy flat brim things, you know, like open crown. They're making pencil curls, you know, like those, uh, what do you call it, rolls? Uh, those pencil rolls, uh, kettle curl edges, um, like a Tom Mix has. And all these like really trendy hats, but they're also making the classics too. They're making stuff like this in serious, serious heavyweight fur felt, like good, good stuff that you, you really don't have to worry about. Um, they offer their hats in three different felts. They have it in wool felt for people who can afford a, like a $140 hat. They have it in good, good thick fur felt, you know, um, and then they also have it in that silk, uh, that beaver finish, the silk peluche uh, finish, which is some of the thickest, most hardiest, gorgeous felt I've ever seen. We had them years and years ago, and we sold out like eight varieties of them or something. We had a Derby, a Hamburg, a pork pie, a center crease, a three inch center crease, and a teardrop, six styles in three colors each. Black, uh, like a cognac beige, and a steely gray blue color. So like six styles in three colors each, all like that beaver, expensive stuff. We sold them all out so fast. The gray blue ones sold first, the beige second, and the black ones were the last to sell. They were the slowest. But um, I got a good sneak peek at that felt and how nice it actually was. And um, you know, you'd be very, very lucky to have a hat made out of that stuff. Or you won't have to really worry or, you know, nitpick is this raindrop gonna make my hat dissolve or something. It's that good hardy, good stuff, you know. So, I don't know, I'm kind of a nerd. I get impressed by like good felt and stuff. It's, it's really nerdy and kind of pathetic, you know, like, you know, find yourself a nice girl, you'll be much happier, you know. But uh, I'm just saying, it's things like that just like impress me. And then I stay up all night looking at their catalog, like, I don't know, you could get this in that felt and that in that felt, you know, like a galaxy, a blah, blah, blah. Queens Boulevard, a lot of sirens. But, okay, let's let's turn the steam on. I just got a hat in um, for a very nice fellow who's a, who's a good watcher, a viewer. His name is Brandon. He's a, uh, a fan of uh, Shannon Hoon from uh, Blind Melon. Uh, rest in peace. Uh, the fellow passed away. He had a very iconic hat that he used to wear all the time. And he's just been searching for that hat forever and ever. It's basically like a uh, like a ninth, late sixties, early seventies velour um, in a very light cognac, kind of a tan cognac color with a brown rope band. And um, 
we found the pretty much the exact same hat. The only difference is like the little cross piece by the bow was was tan instead of brown, but uh, it was almost identical. So he was really really stoked because he's been searching for this for a very long time. Original feather. This is a Bowman hat, which is pretty interesting. Um, it's an old old Bowman hat. Let's see what it says on there. Yeah, gonna get in front of the stand. Let's turn this crap off for a second. All right. Yeah, it's uh, designed by. Uh, Al Alan St. George, the American classic designer. Ooh, genuine velour made of imported furs. Alan St. George, Bowman Hat Company. I believe Bowman Hats is one of the oldest hat companies out there. I think they started in Pennsylvania in the 1860s or something. I, I Googled it. Let me see. Hold on. Hold on. Yeah, Bowman Hat Company is founded 155 years ago. They're actually one of the biggest hat companies in the world, believe it or not. Bowman Hats and uh, Dorfman Pacific are two of the sort of hidden names that make probably more hats for other companies and, and just hats all over the world. People don't know them, but they're huge. Bowman is very famous for making a lot of the, the light felt crushable hats for other people. They'll make them for, you know, Stetson, New York Hat Company, blah, 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 for a cabis and this and that. Um, Bailey, they make those. And if you've never seen the Bowman Hat Company tour on YouTube, check it out. Okay, so they were founded in 1868 in uh, Pennsylvania, Adamstown, Pennsylvania. Uh, wow. Okay. They're on four continents now. Uh, they've covered many Hollywood actors from Humphrey Bogart to Fred Astaire. Okay, do do da. The rest is pretty boring. Yeah, the rest is, is definitely boring. Nothing good here. But um, so I found this. We can find this hat in any. You know, you can find it in Stetson and Mallory and Bill. Everybody made these. Dobbs was famous for them. This is what you call the Kojak style. Uh, Kojak wore these. You know, the Who Loves You Baby guy, and. Uh, it's also the Shannon Hoon stuff. So let's see what's wrong with it. Okay, you can see right here. This is from people grabbing it. It should be right up there. Okay, so that's the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and I'm going to turn that to there, right? Okay, that's where it should be. All right, so let's do that first, right? Let's just do that first. All right, this hat is not dusty. I am not going to bother taping it down. It is actually not dusty at all. So I'm hitting that front end and holding it up with my fingers now. I've kind of got that on the inside. I'm just propping it up and I'm, I'm sort of pushing up forward too a little bit. Just holding it still. I just fixed that front. Now a very common issue with hats is that they get squeezed. So this whole area here gets together. So you're going to find a lot of times you have to separate. You have to take these two wings here and kind of pull them apart. You might not know about that, but it's like a thing. One way I do it is I stick my hands inside here and I just kind of open the spread like this. See if you can see it work, watch. See that? So it's like this now, the hat should be like, like that. So I'm just gonna hold that, and just steam it all over, and let's hope that holds. Little details like this. You just know if somebody's squeezing that front and that front collapse like that, that the front is going to be pinched together too. So you check it. You spread it out like that. So my hands are inside opened like this and my muscles are kind of like pushing against. My fingers are like, like a claw. As it dries. Okay. It's, it's done. It's opened. All right. Another issue with this hat, the brim's been flipped down for like years. So when it's flipped up, you can see it's not right. It should be pushed up there, right? All right, so let's take the flat side over there. Let's push it up with my thumb. The hat is already very stiff, so it doesn't need added stiffener. So what I'm doing is I'm taking that flange, which is totally flat on the side, and I'm trying to curve it, I'm trying to make a curve by pushing just the end, of, just here. Not the whole brim, but just the edge of the brim with my thumb. You gotta be super careful not to burn yourself, because you're coming to the edge of the brim, you could burn yourself bad. Most importantly, always keep the hat between you and the felt. Burns are not fun. They're not fun at all. 
When you catch a burn, you feel it for days and days. Um, I haven't had one in probably, I don't know, 10, 15 years or something, probably more. I can't remember the last time, but when I first got the job at uh, JJ's in the 90s, I would catch these forearm burns here. Like, the whole thing would just like, for a second it would be, and I'd pull it away in a split second, but my forearm would hurt for like, you know, three, four days and just be raw. Then again, the steamer I was using there was like really, really powerful. It was, uh, we never really had anybody to adjust it or regulate it for us. It was just full force all the time, but uh, a Jiffy steamer is a little harder to burn yourself, but you'll catch a burn just as easily. It happens in a second. It's very quick. You notice my eyes are right on it all the time. If somebody talks to me, somebody distracts me, you want to take photos of me, whatever, you can't take your eyes off this. Not for a second. Concentrate on what you're doing. Don't mess around. Your wife is talking to you and joking around or whatever. Just tell her, give me a second, you know? This is serious work. Yeah, I just don't want you guys to get burned. I don't know if any of you have done it yet, but it sucks. So safety is a serious, serious thing, okay? So I'm looking for areas on the brim that are sagging and I'm pushing them up. I'm basically pushing up all the way around the brim with my thumb, just pushing as I steam. I steam right in the crack here and I push up with my thumb. This is gravity. Pretty much all brims sag and they get flatter. Every time somebody brings in a hat for a steam up, it's just standard stuff. The, the brim sags, it's got to be pushed up. After I get that flange, flangey and curvy like this, and I get out all the flat parts, then I could worry about making the brim, the brim straight. I could just hold it against a tabletop edge. See, I took my eyes off the, the steam for a second. Bad habit, Kev. Don't look at the monitor, look at what you're doing. If you're doing this and you're filming yourself for videos, don't look at the monitor, don't get distracted. And one thing I haven't really spoken about is burns and stuff and safety. It does happen especially when you're new at this, so just be careful. Okay, I'm gonna spread this a little bit more. All right, let's push the back up now. All right, let's do a little tabletop action. I'm gonna be setting up some new furniture here so you guys can see me doing the tabletop. Right now you can. basically leaning it down on the table edge and just letting it dry against that edge. Okay, so we've got a nice upturned brim now. Look at that. Before it looked all crappy, now we've got a nice upturned brim. What I'm going to do is I'm going to step away from it. I'm going to let the hat cool. Don't oversteam your hats. This is a process of Heating and cooling, heating and cooling. I heat it up now, I'm pushing with my finger. Now I'm pushing with the brim up, and then it cools. As I hold it still, it's cooling into place now. So you can't just keep heating and heating and heating, because eventually nothing will cool, and the head is just always hot, and you're not really steaming and changing anything. Uh, the other thing is if you're steaming and a hat is too soft and there's no stiffener in there, you're not going to do anything either. Just waving a hat in front of a steamer doesn't really do too much. Um, what you're really doing is you are melting the little coating of stiffener that's on there for a second. You're changing the shape with your hands, holding it still while that stiffener hardens again and holds that into place. It's that plasticky spray that you put on there that's in the hat that cools for it, that basically melts with the hot steam, okay? And you move it to where you want it to be, okay? You hold it, hold it still, and then the stiffener is cooling now. It's hardening, it's hardening, and it's holding it into place like a glue, okay? So without that glue, there's no steaming. The whole process is just nothing. Basically, these hats have stiffener in them from the beginning, from the factory. So if, if the hat is still stiff, you don't need to add any. But if it's gotten soft over the years and it's just floppy and there's not enough body, the steaming process is going to work less and less. 
And if it's completely floppy and there's nothing holding it up, you know, like this brain is being held up by stiffener, it's just going to flop down like, a, like an old pillowcase or something, and steaming will do zero. So you need to reconstitute the stiffener, let it dry, harden up, and then start stiffening. You're melting the steamer, moving the hat, let it dry, melting the steamer. Okay, so it's cooling and drying, cooling and drying. It's not the felt, it's the stiffener that you're working with and manipulating. Pretty interesting, right? It's true. Another nerdy thing that makes me interested. All right, so I'm going to put this hat down now. Um, I think we all, we're we going to over steam it. I'm going to put it upside down. Let's take the, uh, there's a vintage feather there. What you want to do is you want to pick the different parts apart. Sometimes the different layers get uh, intertwined. So you've got red on top, green is under that, and black is under that. So you get them all like separated in the right place. Give them a very quick wave in there. Okay, and then just brush it up once with your hat brush. That's it. Just give it one little something like, you know, like that. Yeah. That's it. Okay, get it the steam quick. Okay, make sure it just gets it. And then just go once upwards. It's going to start off looking a little spiky and wet, like a uh, like a wet duck or something. But as that dries and all and all those little feathers dry out, it'll look nice and brand new again. So that's how you fix your feather. All right, let's turn this off and step away from the Shannon Hoon hat for a while. This needs to cool. So remember that, guys. Step away from your hats. Don't keep steaming it and steaming it. Um, take a break. Let it cool and. Uh, when you get that stiffness and that hardness back again, your steam is gonna start working like a charm again. So what happens when your hat gets too hot and everything is just soft, 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 it's never drying and it's never stiffening into place and the steaming process is just not working again. It's nothing. So, um, eh, maybe I should have dusted it. I just found two little specks of dust. All right, okay. That's a little shaping. First thing I generally do with these hats is I, I pat it down, make sure there's no dust on there. Then I condition the felt. I usually open up the crown. I'll show you something like this. I'll take it, I'll open it, okay? And I, I'll just sort of get all the hairs in the hat going the same way. You wanna get rid of all these little wrinkles and all this stuff. So you want everything smooth and you want the felt to just go in counterclockwise. Like, so if all those hairs, they were like just matted up now into a big knot, you'll hit it with steam, they'll rise up and separate, okay? Then you take your brush and then you want to brush them counterclockwise so they all lay in that same side way like this. Okay, you see these finishes with like long hair finishes, beaver, things like that, beaver finishes, you see the hairs more. But they're there, okay? They're going in the same direction. You just don't see it more in a smooth finish like this. But the first thing I do generally before I start shaping the hat, like I just did with uh, Brandon's hat, is I'll condition the felt. So I want to make the felt just, you know. So the first thing I'll do is I'll tape it down, okay? We'll get the dust off, okay? After that, we're going to give it like a nice mist. Mist of steam on the crown, okay? so that all the hairs of that felt stand. They're getting wet and they're kind of opening and standing up now, okay? You don't want to go crazy. You don't want to reshape the hat. You just want to get it moist, like a little sort of dew drops on the surface of it there, okay? And then, I'm gonna brush the heck out of it. Counterclockwise, it's okay to be a little bit aggressive. Using a soft brush like this, it's probably fine. You start using really spiky hair, like uh, plastic brushes, it can scratch the finish. But you see what I'm doing? I'm just making the felt look closer to what it was when it was brand new. I'm making all the hairs go in the same direction, counterclockwise. Okay. After that, I mean, you could do this a lot, lot more. Okay. You could use various types of brushes. You could go from a stiffer brush to a softer to a softer. Sometimes I like to use a sponge, one of those Bickmore hat sponges, and I see how that works. It gives you a different texture. 
Sometimes the brim brush will give you the right texture. Other times the, uh, the bit more hat sponge will give you another texture that you like better. But what I do is I do them all. Okay? I use all the different brushes and I try to finish it off with the finest brush, the softest one I have. Okay? So in other words, uh, if the hat is really old and, you know, and I don't think this is going to do it, I'll get my stiffer, stiffer brush, you know, like my plastic spiky one. I'll start with that, work my way down to this, and then I'll do something softer, softer, like the bit more sponge or something like that, just to, you know. But um, something like this is going to work for almost anything. A brim brush is really good. Um, crown brushes, you know, the big square ones that are kind of like, they come up like this. Crown brushes, I, uh, they're good for certain things. I feel like um, crown brush is good like when you have like a big row of 20 hats and, you, and they're all dusty and you just want to just dust them all, you know? It's good for that. That's what I like using them. But this to me, it's, it's more precise. You could get into the brim like this with your hand, okay? You could go into your palm, get a little bit more resistance, or you could go on to something like this, like a hat block or a hat stretcher. And you're getting a little, you know, there's a little control there. The brim brush is so soft, it's just sort of like flopping around and stuff. To me, it's more like a duster kind of a thing, and that's all it really does. So. But they are beautiful things, and they're useful, I guess. All right. You condition that felt, just keep going, 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 going. Brush it a hundred times if you have to. Okay, after that, what I might do is I'm gonna round this out. I wanna start with a blank canvas, a nice round open crown, a dome. Okay, so all this stuff that's in here, fingerprints, whatever, I wanna get that out. The next thing I'll do is I'll hit it with a good amount of steam because now we're reshaping, okay? the whole front of the hat. Let's do, you do it in sections. You'll never be able to do a whole hat. It's just, it, it cools off by the time you get to the, the back, you know? So do, the, do it in sections. Do the front first, okay? Now, I'm pulling it against, look at that, pull it against so it's really tight and round. You see that? So all those tears, rips, fingerprints, all those dents, whatever, highs and lows, they're gone. <laughs> pulling it, stretching it as it dries. So now I'm starting with a nice brown canvas, okay? So in other words, first I got the texture nice and new. Now I'm getting the shape nice and new, okay? So once the, the felt is smoothed out, once the shape is smoothed out, you've got a brand new blank canvas to start with. People say, well, oh, how can I take my cattle increase and turn it into a uh, pork pie? It keeps snapping back into that cattle, and I can't do anything with it. Yeah, that's because you need to start with a blank canvas. Get it out. Open it up. Okay, now let's do the back of the hat. We still got some junk on the back there. See? The front looks nice. Same thing. You hit it nice and hard with the steam. Get it on there. You look at it. You try to get it tight and taut so there's no wrinkles. You can even rotate it. You can work on the front, you can work on the side, the back. Okay, you get everything. Sometimes the top gets stretched out. That can happen from, from creasing at various. So if you have something weird on the top that doesn't come out, don't sweat it. It could be a little bit stretched, like here. Okay, that's a pinch that's be very, very hard to get out. You know? You'd have to wet the hat and stretch it and things like that. So we don't want to do that, you know? That's like manufacturing a hat, basically. That's how they make hats. They wet it, they stretch it really tight on a, on a hat block and stuff. Um, but we're not making a hat now. We're just reshaping the hat. Okay, so next what I would do, so let's say I want to start with that center crease. So I'm going to hit this whole area where the crease is, plus the perimeters, the borders too. Okay, you want to get it all. But if there's an area that you're not steaming, you sort of want to keep that part unsteamed. So that part won't really, you want, you want that part to stay stiff, not get soft. So I'm only really softening the middle and you know, around the middle, I'm leaving the two sides hard. Okay. Steaming it up. Center crease it. Okay, you check it. 
take your fingers inside and you start correcting things. You know, just moving, looking at different light. It's good to have a monitor set up like I'm doing. I look in the monitor like a mirror and I look in the different shadows. I turn it in the shadows to look for dents and stuff. Like, okay, there's something happening right over here. But you can't see it until you really... See what I'm saying? Where is there any flaws? There's something right there. What the heck is that, right? You know? Oh, okay, that's the pinch. No big deal, okay? You know? But um, that's what I do. I do that thing with the lights. Work on the crown first. Get the hat conditioned, the felt. Get the shape opened up and, uh, and no more wrinkles. You start with that blank canvas, okay? Your crown is done, okay? You could shape it, you could finish it, blah, blah, blah. Let it dry, let it, let it sit a little, okay? You don't want to start messing this up as soon as you start working with the crown. Let it sit, okay? Don't be in a rush. Let your hat breathe every once in a while. There's definitely a lot to be said. A lot of people are just uh, impatient. They just don't want to do that, you know? And I understand that uh, when you're making a sale, especially, but you just do this. You chat for a couple of seconds, you know, you, you, you talk with the customer, and you, you pretend that you're just talking to them, and then you wait, you know, that's what I do. You wait, you talk, blah, 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 and then it's done. The hat is dry. It only takes like a second or two, okay? Now we start working on the, uh, the brim. We did the crown. So we're looking for what's sagging. Everything has always got to come up, 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 up. So I start pushing back up. Okay, you know this lesson already. Okay, there's an area right there that needs to go come up right there. The so front is pretty good, it's not perfect. But as we turn it, it's really sagging in here. So let's push that up. So it's more like a flange and not a flat hat. Pushing with my thumb close to the edge, but not so close that I get burned. As soon as I start feeling a little heat creeping up on me, I pull my thumb back. I'm at the edge of the brim with my finger, see that? But I'm not going past the edge of the brim, otherwise I'll get burned. Pushing it up, steaming it inside, moving it away, letting it dry. Rotate it, push it up, pushing with my thumb, Hold it still away from the steam, let it dry, rotate it again. Look for spots that are that are sagging. Push it up. See my thumb? I'm pushing right back in. Hit it with the steam. As soon as you feel it going up and it's not moving up anymore, move it away. Let it dry with your finger there. Do the next spot, okay? And your, your brim has a nice flange on it. So a lot of ways to get your flange back, but that's what I do. I push from the back like this. Okay. All right, what about those things? You know about those holes? Did you know that there's a way to kind of hide those and get rid of those? Yeah. What you do is you lower the crown and you, you make this hole inside here so nobody can see it. All right, what I'm going to do is basically just lower that crown now. So let's, let's see it. I'm going to lower it. Lower it, steam it in, so you create a new crown, so if it was up there before, now it's here, okay, yeah, it's lower, it might not be the crown that you liked as much, but there's no hole, the hole is gone, look at that, the hole is totally gone. Kevin, you got rid of my hole. You're amazing. I had a big hole in my head. Where did it go? No, it's still there. But it's hiding. No one will ever see it. Huh? That trick is worth about a thousand dollars. Thank you.